Okay, so continuing on our series of should you upgrade or is it the right time to buy, I'm gonna talk to you, specifically the long-term user of AMD FX holding out for every last bit of performance you can get out of that system before you were forced to upgrade your motherboard, your processor, and your memory. Unfortunately, memory in DDR4 is gonna be the expensive part of your upgrade. So what I have right here is actually an FX8370 system that I have overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. I have 16 gigabytes of 1866 uh, Corsair Vengeance RAM. I almost forgot what it was, the Vengeance line. It's been a while since I've used this RAM. All running on an ASRock A970 chipset motherboard and a GTX 1070. Yeah, something that's a little bit mismatched, but considering the fact that FX is now seven years old, pile driver itself isn't, but the whole architecture which it's based on is seven years old, that's ancient in terms of PC time. So we're gonna see whether or not that can actually hold up to today's modern titles, or whether or not you have finally hit the end of the road. Like a, like a bad crash test dummy in an Institute of Highway Safety crash test. Oh, I could say you piled drived into the end of that wall. <laughs> MSI brings ultra thin gaming to life with their new GS65 Stealth. The 4.9 millimeter bezel, 144 Hz, 1080p panel, Nvidia graphics and 8th gen Intel CPUs make the new GS65 Stealth a true powerhouse with a small footprint. Find out more by following the link in the description below. Now you know that this is an AMD FX based system because it says so right on the desktop. It's not like I went to Google and downloaded that or anything, so you can take my word for it. No, just kidding. Here is the actual proof. We are using, as you can see right here, AMD FX 8370 eight core processor. We're not gonna talk about the debate of whether or not this is truly an eight core processor or a four core processor because there are four core modules in there with two cores per module is shared cache, but that's besides the point. We are currently running at shows 4.35 gigahertz. It is set to, as you can see, 4.4, but that's because the bus speed always fluctuates a little bit. So we are running performance mode, 4.35, and we are air-cooled on a Cooler Master Hyper style cooler. It's not a Hyper D12, I don't remember what it is, but that's besides the point. And you can see our 1070 in there. So we're gonna start off here with just a CPU test. Let's see how things fare on Cinebench. I'm expecting it to be below or right around the 3770, maybe slightly above, because what you have to keep in mind if you're running the 43 or the 8370, this is actually a slightly improved, it came out a few years after the 8350. This is a higher core clock, a little bit better performance, but it's it's the exact same core architecture. There's nothing different about it. The same level of, or the same amount of cache. It's identical to an 8350, just better clocks and a little bit better efficiency. So it is of course unlocked, which is why we're running at 4.4, but you can see just how long this test is taking right now that it is certainly showing its age. Now look at that, right above a 3770, kind of where I, was, I said it might be a little below or a little above, there it is right there, 689. So you can already see that this CPU overclocked, and yes, we're doing overclocking to be fair because it's, oh, it is unlocked, of course, take advantage of that. And two, I am an advocate for overclocking, and we wanna see, obviously, if you can get more out of the CPU based on its longevity, all factors should be considered, overclocking is one of them. But this puts it right in line with a 2012-ish Intel CPU. So definitely competes at its uh, era, which is good. Now, what about something like 3 Mark? Yeah, we'll go ahead and check out 3 Mark. We'll just do a regular old time spy. Now we kind of had a little bit of a discussion here offline or off camera before we started this video about whether or not uh, I should be testing in 1080p or 1440 or 4K. And what I tend to have just kind of sampled with my own viewers and people that are still on FX is very few people, if any, are actually running 4K panels with an FX processor. So that's why we're running Firestrike normal right here. But as you can see, our GPU is sitting at 97% utilized, 2000 megahertz, so it overclocked itself. Our temperatures are looking pretty good. And you can see our CPU usage, at least in 3D Mark, it's a couple of cores are not really being utilized. But because we're seeing 97% usage on the GPU and not 100% usage on any of the CPU cores, it means we are effectively, at least in this synthetic benchmark, we are not uh, CPU limited. We are not bottlenecking our GPU with our CPU. Now the CPU test is obviously where we're gonna see the biggest difference between modern CPUs at only 26, 25 FPS. Modern CPUs, even like 
four core non hyper threaded CPUs on Intel or even Ryzen four core non simultaneous multi threading because you know not hyper it's simultaneous would see probably a higher FPS than that probably somewhere in the 30s or 40s. So that's just its age and its terrible instructions per clock for its era. That's making that test really kind of suck. So our final combined score was a 10,946. Not terrible, not nothing to write home about. You can see our G graphic score is actually decent at an 18,565. That is probably ever so slightly below where we were seeing this when we were doing our initial 1070 testing when Pascal first launched two years ago. So I don't, it, obviously in this test, we weren't really seeing the GPU be limited by the CPU, but if we care, compare our results online, right there, we're in the upper half. Not quite a 4K gaming PC, but we're better than a gaming laptop. Hey. <laughs> wow, that's depressing. So Phil had a pretty good point that he wanted to make, and we're gonna go ahead and test this now, is he thinks that with the Far Cry 5 being heavily multi-threaded, that actually benefits older hardware like the FX that took place before gaming multi-threading was really a thing. So this might actually be leveraging the horsepower of an older GPU better than modern games that aren't multi-threaded and are relying heavily on core clock and IPCs. So what we were gonna check here is I went online and I found an article by Kit Guru where they actually took Far Cry 5 in 1080p, went ultra settings, no AA and no motion blur. So if you recall, and they did that with a 7700K by the way, uh, overclocked to 4.8. And what we're gonna be checking here is to see if we come anywhere near the 7700K with the 1070. So they have a 1070 founders. We're using the GeForce uh, for the win, for the win two, I believe it is, which actually, as you saw, goes up over 2000 megahertz when it's being fully utilized. So we're gonna see if we come anywhere near that. So our settings are matching. Um, Anti-aliasing is off, motion blur is off, and we are in ultra. So let's go ahead and run this benchmark. So as you can see, by taking off some of the AA settings and motion blur, asking the CPU to handle higher frame rates, our GPU is definitely being bottlenecked. That is a bottleneck. 61 percentage, 33 or 63%, 70%. It's not in the 90s until the very end right here where it jumps up. It is certainly being bottlenecked. The question is how far away is it? Kit Guru on a 1070 Founders Edition card on a 7700K running 4.8 gigahertz got an average of 94.7 FPS. So it's pretty obvious this graphics card is being bottlenecked by, well, the FX8370 overclocked to 4.4. And we're gonna test Battlefield 5. This was kind of a long, long winded roundabout way of getting to test this. And this is what actually kind of triggered today's video about whether or not FX is still worth it. Because Battlefield 5 is an open beta. So we're gonna test this in open beta. It's important to know that this is not a finished game. There could still be some optimizations. There probably still will be game ready drivers for Nvidia that are gonna be coming out when the game fully launches. We obviously know Battlefield 5 is part of RTX with global illumination, and obviously it has HDR involved, as well as ray tracing and all that stuff. So that's a whole different discussion for another day. The reason why I did this is when I looked up Battlefield 5 minimum system specs, they're saying they mirror that of Battlefield 1, because it's the same exact engine, but check this out. They recommend an AMD FX 6350, or an Intel Core i5-6600K. If you compare, the FX 6350, which is a six core, six thread CPU, to the i5-6600K, which is six gen Intel, four core, no hyper threading, the 6600K decimates the 6350 in every single test. So I find it really interesting that DICE went with the 6350 or 6600, because I know there are other GPU or CPUs out there that better mirror the 6600. So I feel like they're being very laxed on FX or, in, or AMD and a little bit more demanding on Intel, which is surprising. So obviously we are running this game now above the minimum requirements, which we are hoping is gonna give us a decent gaming experience. We are just pegged at 100% usage. To be fair, that frame rate. The frame rate's not bad. I mean, it's in the 80s, but the reason why I'm flying is because this is kind of asking a lot of the CPU, right? But there's lots of stutters. You see the in the graph at the bottom, those dips? Dude, the FPS though, like you're right, it's great, but I think that 100% utilization might have been when it was, nope. When I point back at the players, it goes back to 100. All right, so heavy CPU utilization, but overall, it doesn't really seem to be affecting our game. So let's get down on the ground though. Let me bail out of this. Oh, but look at this, down on the ground though, 50, 47, 46, 52. Wow, this is bad. Yeah, and your GPU is not gonna utilize that much. Either. Yeah, we are definitely seeing a little bit of bottlenecking. 
And here's the thing, if we turn the settings down, it's only gonna make it worse. Because what happens when you're CPU limited is the lower the settings, the more you're asking of your CPU because the GPU sends more frames per second. And if it already can't handle what the GPU is sending it, sending more is not gonna be a good thing. We're definitely seeing a bit of bottlenecking here. Now there's two ways you could kind of combat this. If you are not able to leave your, uh, your FX platform, let's just say money is, no, is not an option. Well, you can hopefully not pair it with a 1070, right? If, you're, if you've got a high-end GPU like this that you're pushing all of these frames, that is harder on your CPU. Now, if I was to put something in here like a 960 or a 950 or even like a 1050 Ti, we would probably see less CPU utilization right around the same FPS because there comes a point where your GPU is too fast for your CPU. So you get the GPU performance down to match where your CPU is, then you're not bottlenecking it. So what you have right here is essentially the same gaming experience you could have on a lower end GPU, but with wasted money that costs more than that, G that lower GPU would be that you're not getting any benefit of, at least in this game, because of the way that it is currently being optimized. Now again, this could be because it's beta. There's many reasons this could be. So that was just kind of a quick look here at how FX is performing with some modern titles here in 2018. No surprise, there is definitely bottlenecking involved. There was a discussion about bottlenecking being a thing back in 2011 when these CPUs were new. So the general consensus would be if you can upgrade now is the time to do it. But before you do that, make sure you look at my last upload where I talked about some things to consider before you upgrade. And if you're coming from the FX platform, you're pretty much gonna be looking at a complete upgrade. We're talking motherboard, CPU, and memory, because remember, the new CPUs are all using DDR4. So anyway, yeah, if you guys are running an FX system, why don't you put your specs in the comments below and let people know what games you play and what kind of FPS you get with what settings. Anyway, guys, we're gonna go. Thanks for watching. Obviously, we've got more content coming in the near future here, and as the new platforms launch, we will be testing those as well, because the fall of... Q4 of 2018 are looking like a pretty good time for PC enthusiasts to build a new computer. With that, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching, as always. We'll see you in the next one. And I can't wait to get back in Battlefield 5 and suck some more. When it's when it's fully released, though, I don't I don't really like the betas.